putting big bucks towards safety. We have a lot of street robberies. We have a lot of burglaries. Aurora launching a new program aimed at cleaning up crime along East Colfax. Tonight, we're asking businesses if they think that's money well spent. It's just very difficult to come up with that huge money for the right security system. Concerns over noise and air pollution at the Rocky Mountain Airport. I can't have windows open when the weather is nice because if I'm on a work call, I'm going to be impacted by the sound of an airplane. Neighbors say they're fed up, and now a judge is ruling opening the door for them to sue. Plus, on the market for the first time in decades. The fixtures are original, and the tile is original. Tonight, a Denver condo offering lookers a trip back in time. Curbing crime along East Colfax. The city of Aurora hoping to make that area safer through a new grant program. The city is offering funding to help businesses boost their security. And today, Denver 7 CB Cotton talked with owners ready to take the city up on its offer. Each day, Sarah Urkus stays busy with customers. Sour blue razz, Hawaiian limeade. Inside her store, the bonk shop on East Colfax in Aurora. I do a lot of buying and selling too. These days, she's also busy finding ways to keep her store secure. We were broken into for the first time about a month ago. They took a crowbar to the door. We caught it on video. They were in and out in six minutes. In that short time, the thief was able to get away with about $2,000 of merchandise. We're all trying to pay our bills too, and all this is affecting, it's all rolling downhill. It's affecting us all. But help to fight crime is on the way. The city will give out half a million dollars in $10,000 grants to businesses along Colfax Avenue between Yosemite and Peoria and 14th and 16th Avenues. Store owners like Urkus can apply come Monday. I believe we will be um, trying to get some help with the security. The money is being pulled from the federal aid the city received during the pandemic. Business owners can install new cameras, lighting, alarms, and the installation will be done by city approved contractors. I feel like some of the businesses have left because it's too dangerous. We have a lot of street robberies. We have a lot of burglaries. We have a lot of uh, assaults. Um, a lot of drugs on Colfax, and it, um, it's just kind of rampant right now. Aurora officer Kevin Burke is hoping the grant money will encourage businesses to stay. So here's what he's hoping is installed. Lighting along Colfax and camera systems that we can use when a crime does occur, we can use to go and identify the person. Irk has never found out who stole from her and doesn't think she ever will. I will probably never see that money. In Aurora, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. And the push in Aurora comes as President Biden renews his call for communities across the country to use funding from the American Rescue Plan to keep our streets safe. Use these funds we made available to you to prioritize <clears throat> public safety. Do it quickly before the summer when crime rates typically surge. Taking action today is gonna to save lives tomorrow. So use the money. The White House says $10 billion from the American Rescue Plan has so far been put toward public safety and violence prevention. Well, Denver is raising its COVID community level now to medium as the city sees an increase in cases. The city says cases per 100,000 people now exceed 200, so it's shifting the level from low to medium. The increase in cases is being caused by a subvariant of the Omicron strain. Now, the city does not expect to have to raise a level or raise a level to uh, what we saw during the Omicron surge during the winter time. So what does raising the community risk mean? Well, Denver says if you are at high risk for severe illness, you should talk to a doctor about whether you need to wear a mask or take other precautions. You should also stay up to date with your COVID vaccines and get tested if you have symptoms. And it's not just Denver seeing COVID cases on the way up. Boulder County, Mineral County, and Southwest Colorado also raising their COVID levels to medium. In response to the rising cases, the Boulder City Council says it will be returning to all virtual meetings. 10 Colorado police officers killed in the line of duty now immortalized in our nation's capital. Their names were added today to the National Law Enforcement Memorial. And among those recognized, Boulder Police Officer Eric Talley and Arvada Police Officer Gordon Beasley. And Talley died responding to the mass shooting at the Table Mesa King Supers last March. Beasley lost his life last summer when he was shot in Old Town, Arvada. The other names added today include seven officers who died after contracting COVID-19 while on the job. Mesa County Sergeant Stephen Weiler, Aurora Police Officer Eric Scherer, 
Doug Coe Deputy Joseph Pollock, Albert County Deputy Clay Livingston, Windsor Police Officer Ty Powell, and Denver Sheriff's Deputies Daniel Trujillo and James Herrera. Arapahoe County Deputy Charles Wilcox, who died in 1899, also was added today. Evacuation orders have been lifted for residents near Durango, but they are still on pre-evacuation alert tonight. La Plata County says the Ute Pass fire started around 4 this afternoon, burning northeast of Durango between Horse Gulch and Ute Pass. 30 acres burn, but crews have been able to slow the threat, and at one point, 60 homes had been ordered to evacuate. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. Meanwhile, more than 200 firefighters tonight are on scene battling the High Park fire in Teller County. This fire ignited Thursday has so far scorched more than 900 acres west of Cripple Creek. No homes have been lost, but the fire is 0% contained and officials say more than 100 people are evacuated. Denver 7 will continue to monitor firefighting efforts and we'll have the latest tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. And fire season is really all year long right now in Colorado. And now there's a new tool in the works that will help combat the flames. This $24 million chopper known as the Firehawk is Colorado's first. It's capable of carrying 1000 gallons of water at a time while transporting up to 12 firefighters to any fire emergency. We'll add uh, mission essential equipment, uh, different types of radios and things so that the crews in the aircraft can communicate with the firefighters on the ground, mapping systems, uh, different types of uh, lights and things along those lines. The mission now is to finish constructing the Firehawk as quickly as possible. That's expected to be complete by the end of the year, and then it will be transferred over to the State Department of Public Safety. And from there, fire crews will start training in the aircraft before it's put into use. That could happen midway through next year. Authorities now say one person was killed when her mobile home caught fire in Colorado Springs. The El Paso County coroner has not identified the woman, but her mobile home was one of eight destroyed Thursday as these dry, gusty conditions helped spread the flames from home to home. A high school English teacher is on administrative leave tonight after joining students in a walkout. Now, dozens of Denver North High School students walked out of class today in protest of the school's decision not to renew the contract of Tim Hernandez. Hernandez, who joined the walkout, says he was told he was not rehired because he didn't interview well, despite holding this job for more than a year. But he believes the real reason is because he's outspoken on equity issues. The leaders of my school have labeled me as divisive and disruptive. The principal of my school has called me aggressive and attacking, coded language that is hurtful and detrimental to men of color. Now, despite joining the protest, Hernandez says he did not encourage students to leave class. In a statement to Denver 7, DPS did not provide a reason for putting Hernandez on leave because, quote, it does not discuss specific personnel decisions. Broncos receiver Jerry Judy is out of the Arapahoe County Jail tonight, one day after his arrest for tampering with a domestic violence enhancer. Now, Judy was booked after investigators say he refused to give back items to the mother of his one-month-old child. There was no physical violence. Before a judge today, the woman asked for charges to be dropped. And we heard from Judy's attorney who says he should have never been charged or have spent last night in jail. I think it was extreme because I don't believe a crime has been committed. I don't believe my client did anything that would rise to the level of a crime. And having someone spend the night in jail because we have this, quote, moniker of domestic violence, unquote, that is too broad, applies without any kind of uh, discreetness, which should have been applied here. Judy is scheduled to appear in court again on May 31st. Well, for years, people living near Rocky Mountain Airport in Broomfield have complained about the increase in air traffic noise and air pollution. And now a recent ruling from a Colorado judge is opening up the potential for lawsuits from homeowners. Denver 7's Rob Harris talked to neighbors who say they are fed up. It is literally loud enough to impact the ability to have a conversation in my house. And they fly over, you know, it can be every few minutes. There you go. Rachel Stanton and her family moved to the Rock Creek neighborhood in Superior five years ago. She says they were ready to deal with some noise from the nearby Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport. We all, you know, understood that when we moved here. And it's not that anyone wants to totally, you know, eliminate all of that, but we want to see more controls and limitations on the amount of traffic that comes over this neighborhood. But the bigger issue is I'm concerned about the risk the safety risk of having airplanes, small planes by people in training coming over our homes and business. Stanton says the amount of noise and disruption has her second guessing the home she chose. And she's not alone. I just said, you know, there's only one 
thing we can do, and that's to change our location. Mark Rickettson lived in the Boulder area for 20 years, but in 2020, he said he'd reached his limit. I got to the point where I said, you know what, nobody's listening. I was noticing a constant go for a walk, and there would be a, just a constant drone of aircraft over your head. The airport here has been open since 1960, but residents say the air traffic from it has greatly increased, especially in the last few years. And that's amid a nationwide shortage of pilots. Training new pilots has led to a huge increase in air traffic in the area, often including several loops around neighborhoods, as these flight diagrams show. If it was occasional, not a problem. When it's every five minutes, that becomes disruptive. A Boulder County District Court judge recently ruled in favor of the Rock Creek Master Homeowners Association, which has sued over noise violations. The ruling opens the door for individual homeowners to now sue as well. Jefferson County has appealed the ruling, as has the HOA, wanting the judge to go further and include more homes. On a day like this, I would want to have my windows open, and it's hard to have my windows open on a beautiful spring day because there's continuous airplane noise. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris. Denver 7 reached out to the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport and Jefferson County. We tried to get comment. We have not yet heard back. Just a perfect day today with temperatures in the middle 70s, warmer for the weekend, and there's some rain in the extended forecast. Vintage vibes in the heart of the metro. I like classic, I like history, I like things that have a little bit of meat to them. Stepping into this Denver condo is like stepping into a time machine. Plus, Broncos head coach Nate Hackett opens up about that big week one showdown in Seattle.